Welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be looking at some LED local dimming uh, tests. So let's start off with this one. I apologize, I am using an iPhone 13 Pro camera. It's just the camera that I own versus my uh, standard IPS display. And we'll go back and forth. So let's zoom in on the picture and see if I can get the focus. So uh, now that the focus is a little bit clearer, I think, you'll notice it's a nice, bright, sharp edge on, around it, and that the screen around the bright area is perfectly black. When we go to the IPS display, just standard IPS, no local dimming, it's edge lit. It's the Asus MG279Q. Let me zoom in. It actually also looks pretty good. Uh, not a lot of blooming around it, but it doesn't have local dimming and the screen itself is significantly brighter. All right, let's go to the next test. But both with the VA and uh, IPS type mini LEDs, you're gonna get the nice dark black areas that are around bright objects. So you notice as I change my focus and bring the camera into the bright area, it uh, changes its um, exposure rate so that you don't get that bright fringe around the edges. It's just a quality of the screen itself. And uh, yeah, it's perfectly black. It looks fantastic. And uh, jumping from a uh, IPS class display which I thoroughly loved, to the new VA with mini LED local dimming. I, I really can't say I'll go back. Just local dimming is the best feature ever. I could put up with a little bit less HDR as long as it has this local dimming feature. And I would make sure you have more than 500 zones uh, just because it, to make it look its best. Right, you're gonna excuse the darkness. This is a black screen test. My uh, keyboard is illuminated, so uh, you're gonna see a little bit of extra glow through the through the camera of my cell phone. But there's a little bit of a halo. It's not much. It's not as much as you see on the screen, actually, uh, through the camera. It's just very faintly apparent. Uh, visually with the eye. There's just a little small, uh, I'm gonna say off gray, maybe a bluish color, just around the, the cursor wherever it's scanning on this. Uh, hitting play, let's, let's stop the mouse movement so everything will hopefully just uh, disappear into the background. Oh, I stopped hitting play. There we are. And that is a perfectly black screen. I'm going to unplug my keyboard real quick. Ah, poop. Give it a second. And I don't know why you see this glow, but visually, I don't see anything. For comparison, my laptop sitting right next to it, this is an IPS class display. It has a very definite glow to it. This is just about pitch black. Kind of in short, this is uh, on the Odyssey Neo J, so I'm sorry, G8, sorry about the curve. But this is what edge lit local dimming looks like, where it'll have these vertical bars. Then you have full array local dimming, where everything is kind of split up into these boxes. And mini LEDs just shrink these boxes even further. This example is of 384 boxes. So you have a bright, let's say, the sun right here and sun rays coming down. The more boxes you have, the more accurate you can get everything to be um, than having fewer boxes. So the, the larger it is, the less accurate it can be when you go out of the bright area to a darker area. I don't know if I'm explaining that as well as it can, can be, but that's kind of one way to think about it. It's just, where's the bright area on the screen? Where's the dark area? So like the night sky, little specks of light are stars. So if each star is in its own box, that, but they're not, but they're scattered um, 
uh, not evenly across the screen, uh, the, the boxes that have a little starlight in it are, are going to be a little bit brighter than boxes without the starlight. So how even do you want that to be? And um, OLEDs completely solve that by just being each, each spec, each pixel is, is a point of light. So it can be completely turned off or on so you don't have any of that blooming artifact where a little box might be too bright in theory. Uh, so in the end, I've decided to, to wait to, to go basically the next five years with this VA monitor with mini LEDs before uh, and uh, to let the OLED and QED LED monitors uh, technology progress so you don't have to worry about uh, Pix or fading pixels and burning and that kind of not fun stuff. Classic monitors tend to not have any of those problems. Last but not least, we're going to look at a uh, monitor calibration test. So right here is on the Odyssey Neo G8 and it's uh, every little square box doo -doo -doo, is actually two slightly different shades. So it's can you see the different sh the shades between the two? Uh, yes or no? And that's on the Asi Neo G, and this is my uh, Asus monitor. Both of them have very good contrast. However, I will say uh, the difference between uh, the different shades right at this black level and right at the top white level is much harder to make out than it is on the new screen.